Jason Watkins exclusive, Line of Duty star on how the tragic death of daughter Maud has driven his career to the brink of TV BAFTA glory. The collective efforts of an exciting ensemble cast may well result in a richly deserved triumph for Jason Watkins in Line of Duty at the 2018 British Academy Television Awards on Sunday evening. The acclaimed police procedural series will compete for the Virgin TV Must See Moment, a traditionally diverse category populated by a broad range of drama, factual and constructed reality entertainment, when the annual ceremony gets underway at London's Royal Festival Hall. It will be poignantly familiar ground for Watkins, whose previous BAFTA win for two-part drama The Last Honor of Christopher Jeffries in 2015 was dedicated to the memory of daughter Maud, four years after her death to sepsis. Reflecting on the emotional impact of her devastating loss, the 51-year-old admits it propelled an already eclectic career towards his best actor winning lead as Jeffries, the high drama of Line of Duty and his consequent role as the ultimately doomed forensic detective Tim Ifield. It's a strange thing that the Baftas helped my work, but my drive for good work and better work has been driven by the tragedy in a strange way, he told Mail Online ahead of Saturday evening's ceremony. Maud, the actor's second child with wife Clara Francis, was just two and a half when a persistent cough and consequent respiratory problems prompted two consecutive visits to a hospital A&E, where she was initially diagnosed with group. But within two weeks of developing her first symptom she was dead, passing away on New Year's Day 2011 after falling victim to sepsis, an insidious illness in which the immune system reacts violently to infection, attacks its own tissue and eventually leads to organ failure. I tried to work immediately and that was never going to happen, but I did try for a week," he recalled of his initial attempt to return to work following the sudden, heartbreaking loss. I had to do lots of things regarding the circumstances of her death so I needed to be at home, I think, sitcom. Truly was the first thing that enabled me to go away and work and earn some money, because there was no money coming in. It was a distraction in some ways but for Clara, she's a jewelry designer so it was harder for her. I was sort of carried along by the people I was working with and it really did help, while there were other challenges for her. The devastated couple eventually found an outlet for their grief through support group Slow, a lottery-funded North London-based organization set up by bereaved parents for bereaved parents, with whom they still maintain a strong bond some six years on from the death of their daughter. My wife works very closely with them, he added. It's a place where parents can sit down and talk about what's happened to them with people who have had it happen to them also. Some people are maybe 10 or 15 years down the line and others have just lost their child so it's a fantastic support group that helped us specifically. Also family and friends. You have to sort of reach out and find them. They are there to help and you have to ask. Sometimes that's a very daunting prospect to help someone when they're feeling so desperate. Grief led to joy with the birth of son Gilbert in 2012 a cathartic moment that Watkins, who also has two sons from his first marriage as well as oldest daughter Bessie with Clara, admits has galvanized the family. I think after we lost out daughter Clara was determined that we would have another child, and it's not a replacement aspect, as much as anything it's more to do with reclaiming a life really, and to not let fate cheat you, he said. Gilbert was really a product of that and of course he's his own little man, he's led us forward and helped us. He's as difficult as any six-year-old boy. But he's wonderful and warm and rewarding and quirky as a flip side, so we're very fortunate that we have him. The actor's renewed drive and overwhelming desire to pursue consistently good work in the years following Maud's death has coincided with a golden period for British drama, and with it a flurry of forthcoming roles. First up is director Terry Gilliam's The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, a typically fantastical adventure from the former Monty Python star in which Watkins takes what he describes as a lovely role alongside Adam Driver, the film's principal lead. The French Riviera will provide a glamorous backdrop when it premieres during the Cannes Film Festival closing ceremony on May 19, shortly before the actor returns to British television in new BBC drama A Very English Scandal. Documenting former Liberal Democrat leader Jeremy Thorpe's 1979 trial and controversial acquittal for the attempted murder of gay lover Norman Scott, the new drama pairs him with Hugh Grant, an unlikely choice for Thorpe, but one that Watkins insists is a piece of inspired casting. He's a sort of underrated actor because he's a film star but then he does something brilliantly funny like Paddington, and he's at the heart of this drama, he explained, he's got the wit and likeness. He's perfect casting for Jeremy Thorpe. You wouldn't think it, but he is. He's the right class, and he's got the wit and the intelligence and the charisma, which anybody who becomes the leader of a political party has to have. He has the gravitas to relish the part. But before that there is the rather substantial matter of the TV BAFTAs and a potential win for Line of Duties must-see moment, as voted by the general public in which Thandie Newton's DCI Roz Huntley narrowly escapes certain death at the hands of an electric saw wielding eye field. It was privileged to work with the actors on that, said Watkins. I mean obviously Thandie, 
who is just a complete joy and so brilliant and professional. We had two brilliant days on that particular scene, and the rest of the cast who created this incredible show. As the episode drew to an end audiences were tossed one way and another, there were twists and turns. It was brilliant writing. When I read it, when I actually read the script, my mouth just kind of opened because I couldn't believe the ending and the way it was shaped. I'm so pleased for the team and everybody that it came so well off the page, that it was made so well and had the impact that it did. The scene, one of four nominations for Line of Duty, including Best Actress for Newton, will compete with other memorable moments from Doctor Who, Game of Thrones, Blue Planet 2, Love Island and the One Love Manchester charity event on Sunday evening. However Watkins insists the award, should they win, is a collective achievement rather than an individual accolade. It's really about everyone in that episode so the BAFTA goes to the line of duty folk, he maintained. I just happened to be a part of that scene. It was a brilliant episode, so if one does win, I'm not sure who will walk away with the gong or if it will be me personally, it's nice to be involved.